And this one is a, a tricky one. Very, very tricky. The Arizona State Sun Devils. Herm Edwards went 8-5 and five last year, and they lose basically everybody. Like, I, I don't know that the list is, is big enough, right? Linebacker Eric Gentry, Ricky Persall, uh, Jaden Daniels all transferred out. DJ Davidson's gone. Um, the cornerbacks are gone. The defensive end, Tyler Johnson's gone. Rashad White, the running back, he is headed off to the NFL, etc. Like, this is a train wreck. They are number 119 in returning production. Uh, it's even worse on offense, or I guess it's about the same on offense, 44% returning production on offense. It's They're completely flipping this thing over. It, it's a train wreck because all of the coaches are gone. Like, the only coach that wasn't let go due to NCAA rules, et cetera, et cetera, was the head coach, Herm Edwards. And tell me how that happens. I mean, I got no idea. Uh, we'll start with the offense here. The new OC is Glenn Thomas. He comes over from UNLV where he wasn't exactly, uh, he wasn't super successful, but it wasn't like the worst. He he followed Matt Rule from Temple to Baylor, jumped over to UNLV when Matt Rule went to uh, the NFL. So, like, he, he's been good. He's been around winning programs, so maybe this will work. Uh, the question here on offense, who's the quarterback going to be? Is it Emory Jones or is it Paul Tyson? I would imagine it's Jones uh, because I don't think they would have been looking for a transfer quarterback if they thought they had something with Tyson, especially that late in the game. Uh, they're going to rely a lot more on the pass this year after losing so much from that number one rushing success rate team last year. Uh, they were awesome at running the football last year, but they lose a ton of it. Uh, a lot of transfers out, a lot of transfers in. Uh, Wyoming uh, running back Zazavian Valade and Vandy wide receiver Cam Johnson came in as transfers. Uh, the offensive line depth looks fairly strong. You know, they, they've they got a lot to figure out here. Just a ton to figure out. Uh, does Glenn Thomas bring a new scheme, or do they continue to run the same thing that they've been doing? And is Brian Billick really calling the shots? Like, is he is he the guy that's really kind of running this ship? I'm curious. Uh, on defense, new DC is Donnie Henderson. He was part of that 2000 Ravens defensive staff, which, of course, Brian Billick was the head coach, etc. You get the point. Only 55% returning production from a defense that was number 23 in points per play allowed last year. Uh, six new transfers, very talented. The roster looks good. I mean, it, the defensive roster, according to CFB Winning Edge, number 29 in roster strength in the country. That's pretty good. The offense, not quite to that point, number 59, but regardless. Uh, the front seven should be pretty good this year. But just like everything else on this team, it's a crapshoot trying to figure out, um, you know, exactly how this bunch will gel. With Are there going to be chemistry issues? Are there going to be anything like that? I, I'm very curious. Uh, the keys to the season here, you know, they're projected favorites in eight games, even with all the turnover because of the, you know, all the all the mess. Their win total sits at six and a half. Um, let's talk about the keys first. Ton of turnover on offense. A lot of upperclassmen, new faces, so that that could be good. You got a bunch of seniors that really want to go out on a on a high note. This could either go to the moon or it could crash and burn quickly. I kind of think it's going to crash and burn, but we'll we'll talk about that here in a second. Defense much the same. Um obvious strength on the defensive line, but a lot of new faces, so you just got to roll the dice and see what you got, I guess. Uh, along with that, at the schedule. I mean, it has a chance to blow this team up very quickly. In the first six games, they play at Oklahoma State, Utah, at USC, and Washington. I mean, this is this is tough. This is really, really difficult. Uh, they've got eight games that they're projected favorites in, but nine of the 12 games are projected to be within one score. So, yeah, I have a feeling that things are not going to go well. This feels like a dumpster fire. And I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. Because if you start out early and you get some good wins and you feel good about yourself, you feel like you're playing for something. You start to lose some of those games early. Like you're going on the road at Oklahoma State in week two. That's going to get tricky. Because then you've got Utah coming up on September 24th at USC on October 1st. And then you play Washington. I... I look at this, I see five and seven on the schedule. So I, I would think the under, which the under is juiced at minus 135 over at BetUS. But this feels like it could go south in a hurry. 
Uh, I don't know that Herm survives this year. But we will see. We will certainly see. Because that is going to be, I mean, just a tricky situation to navigate. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.